Ignite your potential and fuel your fire within. I am Ryan Stevens, and I'm here to help you own your spark with the Catalyzing Podcast. How's it going, everyone? We are back on another episode of the Catalyzing Podcast and so excited to have a duo today that is just such uh, amazing advocates, not only for the athletic training profession, but just for patient care, for healthcare, and the underserved. I'm so excited to have Adam Katie and Christopher Bates. He goes by C. Bates on. Thank you so much, Adam and, uh, and C. Bates for joining us tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are the co-founders of yeah. At Last, AT for athletic trainer and then last is leveraging activism for social transformation um it's a podcast and they're looking to grow beyond that and also uh ring ring cross high performance as well uh they're involved with that it's a nonprofit. so we'll be talking about that today but the focus of this episode is to talk and have a conversation around leading with virtue vision and voice and how do you cultivate character culture and community in your organization in the way that you serve so gentlemen thank you so much for being here tonight I love the alliteration right off the bat. Absolutely. We are happy to be here. Yes. Words yeah. matter. <laughs> Ooh, be impeccable with your words. That, that was some of my notes. Um, yeah. Thank you for having us, Ryan. Uh, the alliteration was excellent. And the, the, the title that you came up with, I think, uh, is going to set the table for everything we'll talk about today. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, let's start out with that passion because you two definitely bring it with with what you do and the way that you built this from the ground up. Give us a, maybe each of you spend you know about a minute and a half or so quick background, but like what about your background led to this foundation of your passion to help the underserved and underprivileged? Adam, you should go first. <laughs> I, I tend to go first, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to go first. It's all good. Yeah. I thought about this recently, gentlemen, but really, really because we had this scheduled. And I have realized through time that my purpose is to help others. And I think if I'm being truly honest with myself in this answer, it's because um, some of my childhood and my family dynamic was a bit traumatic. Mm -hmm. And that sent me on a path in later life to know myself better, understand maybe some positive and negative things that had formed through my identity through life. And at this point in my life, I'm very, I know very well what my purpose is and what makes me feel balanced. And that's impacting the lives of others. And I think it comes out of a traumatic experience for me. We gain power in our experiences if we identify them the right way, and uh, we learn from them and we grow from them. So I appreciate you saying that. Seabates, what about you? Yeah, um, similar to Adam, I, I, it's just we're built for this. You know, I, I think that's really that that kind of sums it up. Um, one of the things I'm gonna let me be let me try to be as succinct as I can. One. I actually used the job description of the certified athletic trainer. You know, at least that's what it was years ago when I was going through my education program. Um, this idea of um, the prevention, the immediate care, and uh, the rehabilitation of athletic injury. Um, obviously, I've adapted that right because I don't. We can't prevent injuries, and I think the nomenclature has changed even for for us as a profession. But we reduce the risk of injury, mm -hmm. we immediately care for injuries, and we rehab. And so I took that. That was a that really resonated with me once I discovered the profession of athletic training because I didn't even know what an athletic trainer was until I got to Cal State Fullerton. So I, I think it's important maybe for me to acknowledge to take this that time to acknowledge that some of this had to do with what I believe is just my destiny, right? Like there's a, I'm a, I'm a man of faith. And so, um, a part of it had to do with like, Hey, this, <laughs> an apple tree will come from an apple seed. Right. And mm -hmm. so, um, anyway, once I got to be, become the athletic trainer who that I was, you know, at birth, arguably, um, and I learned about what an athletic trainer does, um, it was like, oh, man, that resonates with me in terms of who I am as a human. Like my job is to reduce risk of injury, immediately care for and try to rehab people in the game of life so that they can stay in the game of life, not try to depart, leave from this place too soon. Um, 
um, or get back into the game at a higher level than than they were. So, uh, yeah, that, that's 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 kind of what motivates my passion. I literally live it in, every day. I truly appreciate that. And just for everyone listening in the show notes, you'll see the complete bio for these two uh, young gentlemen here. But um, that you can see kind of their journey. But you know, the focus today really is not so much on the clinical side. I mean, we'll talk some clinical stuff, but it, it's really more so about what we lead and how we cultivate uh, an environment in our organization and through our service and what we do. And the first thing I want to have a conversation with you fellows about is about espousing character virtues. And you know, all three of us are leaders in, in our own way. When, when we're talking to leaders out there. Um, sometimes you have challenges with getting a, a unified core virtues set up for your organization. How do we identify what those core virtues should be for our own organization or our own mission um, so that we know what's important and, and really how do we lead by example and demonstrating them once we've identified them? Who's going first? Man, that's a that's a good question. You go, you go. <laughs> okay, I make you think right from the start. Well, for Chris and I, I'll, I'll I'll speak mostly for myself, but I think I can speak for him on certain topics. I think of virtues and and building character from a seminal book that I read, maybe nine to twelve months ago, by David Brooks, and he describes eulogy versus resume virtues. Resume virtues being accolades like the titles that we hold and what we put on our resume, credentialing. But I challenge myself and Chris and anyone that we lead or more importantly, people that we collaborate with to show up daily in our tasks thinking of eulogy virtue, virtues being things like listening intently, being present in the moment, you know, arriving to this podcast and giving you my best self for this 30 minutes that we're here for, you know, not just mailing it in, demonstrating gratitude, making others around us and, and the people that we quote unquote lead feel valued. I think those are foundational things that are just the way we present in life that helps us create culture in the organizations that we work with. And we don't take those things lightly. Now, Chris and I have off days and I don't arrive as purposefully as I want to in every situation, but I hope that if we had to take some data on how we arrive and when we arrive and if it's purposeful, I think we do it 90% of the time. And here's the beautiful part of that. And when you define those virtues and you speak them and you demonstrate them with your team, if you're having one of those days, your team is there to back you up either to support you because you just need support or to call you out and be like, that's not one of our virtues, you know? So, you know, when you establish them, it's very similar to the Simon Sinek concept of why, how, what, you know, your why is your passion and your purpose. The hows are the common themes, the common virtues that are, you know, laced through everything you do. Um, and then the, what are the tools that you use? So it's very similar to, to what you say. That's kind of the parallel in the business world um, as well too. So awesome. Um, CBH, anything you want to add to that? Yeah. I mean, I, you, you brought up a good resource, right? Simon Sinek, start with why. And, and I, I think that's the core of for Adam and I that he didn't mention, right? Like is we, we spent a lot of time and we honestly, we still spend a lot of time. It's an ongoing process Mm -hmm. of us asking the question why we've done it in the past and we still do it even to this day why do we do what we do you know mm -hmm. and because the moment we can't answer that question effectively it's probably time to change something and so um once we identify the why and honestly there's tons of tools that can help you identify your why right mm -hmm. you can google search a ton of different things to figure out what your values are you know and and what what do you believe but i really love what adam that's a really good framework i think for most people um to to hold on to and it's very simple right because what he didn't communicate but hopefully folks can can pick up on and if you didn't i'll make it very clear um the the values uh, uh leadership values or resume values versus eulogy values is basically like you ask yourself the question, what do I want said of me at my funeral? 
And a lot of times we don't even think like that. We don't think that far ahead. So what is it that I want the person, whoever's given my eulogy, if somebody can even care enough to give a eulogy for me, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, look, that we need to start there sometimes, right? Yeah. Because sometimes we as humans, man, we can get we can we can we can get really hairy right yeah. so to the point where nobody might not even want to so first of all it's like hey am i living a life where people will show up and care that i am no longer here right mm -hmm. and then once i once i get to that point right once i can feel like okay i can then it's like what do i want said about me at that time right what do i want what if i have if i'm married if if i have children if if my colleagues and, and such show up, what do I want those people saying about me? And maybe those are different things. And those are the things that you start to work on and value and line that up with your why. And then the last piece that I'll say is that I would encourage others to do, which is, I think, something that Adam and I do is we don't just have our values. We don't just deal with reality because a lot of times those don't align. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a gap there. Right. And so we mind the gap. So we mm. do, we make it very intentional to mind the gap, right? We don't focus so much on our values. We don't focus so much on reality. It's important to do both so, so that you can see how big or small the gap is. Mm -hmm. And basically, as you mind that gap, then you'll know when things kind of come into alignment. It gives, you know. It's it, everything is not black and white. There's a lot of gray and there's ebbs and flows. We all make mistakes. We all do dumb things. We all do things that challenge our own virtues at times for personal choices or things out of our control that we just respond emotionally and don't think through. So, you know, as you're going through all of that, when you identify them in advance, it's, it's just like when a leader sets expectations for their team in advance versus not telling them and then blowing up at them when they don't meet their expectations. Well, you never told me what the expectations are. The same thing with core virtues. When you have a team or, or people that you work with, if you don't communicate those and demonstrate those, it's, you know, it's, it's very unclear. When you are demonstrating those or communicating those, let's say you have a team, you know, you both work with a lot of people. What if someone uh, that you're working with isn't demonstrating one of those core virtues um, how do you address those lapses in behaviors or integrity within a team or an organization that that pop up either intentionally or unintentionally i'll start um i think there, there's a couple different factors i would mention one is trying to address those things in a timely manner you know not letting time pass so people are uh, aware of uh, the recent occurrence and I think speaking from the heart, speaking with humility, like having a frank conversation to say, like there was this lapse, whatever it was, this is not a knock on you as a person, you still hold value because you're a human, but let's talk about how this might affect our culture or, or our organization, because that's a priority for how we all move forward. I, the other thing that comes to mind is I have had some formalized leadership training and didactic education from the military. And I had a mentor that this has always stuck with me. And he said, whenever there's an issue like you're describing, like create some space. So that space might be like five minutes. It might be 10 minutes. It might be like Chris and I having a conversation. We ran through this today with a, a very, very minor situation, but Chris and I will bounce off each other, process it together. We've done it so often that we recognize sometimes we just need each other to get to the right space to then have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And so those are a couple of things. To, to, to say that succinctly, uh, give yourself time to respond. Utilize resources that you know are trusted resources to help you get to the right answer. And then just approach that person with humility and, and or try to make them understand that you are not attacking their character, but there's something that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I think you start with humility <clears throat> because if you start with humility, then you're not you, you put yourself in a position where you where you and the other person understands that you're not attacking them. Mm -hmm. Right. And 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 I love uh, Adam and I are big fans of uh, the therapist, Terry Real. He has this co whole conversation about self-esteem and not to get into it, but. 
he talks about grandiosity, which is not talked about nearly enough, especially in our our culture, our larger society culture. Um, but but it's all around us, and it's so easy for us to always see through a lens of one up and one down. So we're always one upping ourselves, or we're even one upping other people. Oh man, Adam can do a certain clinical exam better than I can. So I ascribe that one aspect of his life to his whole being and say, therefore, he's a better human than me. So I one up him or Adam can do that about himself. He'll one up himself by saying and be grandiose about like, yeah, I could do this particular clinical evaluation better than Chris can. And so I'm a better human than he is. Mm -hmm. Humility removes that. And you do the same thing the other way. You can one down yourself, right? Um, I can, I can say I have a skill or whatever. And I say, uh, I'm not as good. I'm not as good as Adam in that particular clinical evaluation. And so I'm not as good as he is, you know? And so, um, humility, true humility kind of levels that playing field and just says like, man, I'm no better or no worse than the person next to me. Right. And with that mindset going in, then I can have those conversations a little more effectively, you know, and, and hopefully it could be received because now my attitude is not coming off in any way where I say I'm better than you. Cause you can read body language, even if you try to sugarcoat it or whatever, you know? Um, so yeah, humility is a big one. And then I think I agree with all the other things that Adam said too. There's so much power and vulnerability and humility when it comes to Absolutely. building bridges across your team and having yeah. difficult conversations. The yep. walls go up when you when ego is in the front, yep. and um, when people feel attacked, regardless, even if they were wrong, there's much less likely to be resolution of the problem because they're on the defense or you're on the defense and, and yep. attacking. So uh, I'm so glad that you you put it that way, Adam. You talked about the core virtues and the core values um, in your organization, whether it be Raincross or, or at last, um, mm -hmm. how talk us through that process of creating the culture for your organization from the ground up, you know, how, what were some steps you took and then what were some creative strategies once that was in place that you implemented to reinforce that desired culture on a regular basis through your service, through the people that you, you work with? I think a big piece of it, and I've learned a bunch of this from Chris, or he has pushed us in this direction, is knowing ourselves, our strengths, our weaknesses, and how those interplay with each other, but also with whoever we're collaborating with. Several times, Chris has led efforts of evidence-based assessments mm -hmm. for looking at how we grow together, how we work synergistically. He has pushed people in our organization to take those same assessments and then see how we coincide in, in work together. And so that that's a foundational thing for sure. Just assessment that you can do of yourself and others that you're with to figure out how people will work most effectively. And then uh, personally, a, a huge thing for me is how I prepare in my daily life so eating well sleeping well exercising working on my mental health meditating because i know how i take care of myself impacts the people around me mm -hmm. and i didn't always know that and and i was always operating maybe at like half of my potential especially relationally especially in leading yes. people mm -hmm. And uh, Chris has probably seen some of that that growth growth over time. And then I think from a very, very early standpoint of us building culture with people around us, it's being very vocal about planning to fail and how failure hurts and it's painful, but will lead to growth and being upfront about that plan that we're going to take risks. We're going to be vulnerable, like you mentioned. And we're not always going to win at everything we do, but we're going to learn from it each time. That's so crucial. And um, it just reminds me. So um, I was on another uh, show recently, and one of the other guests was Marty Smith from ESPN. He wrote this book called Sideline CEO, and he talks about changing versus evolving. And he, and he talks about how 
evolving is not necessarily changing your values or your virtues. It's just you're learning from them and you're you're adapting over time, but you're not changing your core versus like if you truly change, you're changing your values, you're changing your virtues, you're going in a different direction. Um, and then what you're just talking about there is, you know, when when you take care of yourself and you're going through that process um, and then you're growing with your business and you're, you're um, reading the room, reading what the needs are you're not necessarily straying from your original values or virtues you're just maybe applying them differently or um, attacking them differently or demonstrating them a little differently because you've learned what hasn't worked in the past or you've learned um, ways that have resonated versus have not resonated um, so I, I truly appreciate that inside out approach that you're, you're talking about that is so important um, that we lead by example and we also we start from the inside out when it comes to trying to grow that culture and empower that with our team members around us. Because if you live it authentically and you demonstrate it authentically, it's radiant and it's contagious. And and that makes a, a big difference. And I think that that parallels over too. I want to see Bates, I want to ask you this um, because I know that um, social impact and um, impact in the community, um, addressing uh, bias, uh, reducing bias and barriers. This stuff is very, very important to both of you. Um, let's talk about taking those virtues and those values that you have with that last and with Raincross. And how do you take those and use those from, with some strategies to empower that greater diversity and inclusion practices within your service and to reduce bias and those barriers that, you know, the underserved that you're trying to help are, are dealing with. How do you take those virtues and those values and apply them in a way that's making a difference to address that mission? Well, um, I mean, we can attract practically we can, there's, you know, we've thought through. It took some groundwork for us to figure out, you know, um, the, the different things that we want to do, but practically there's tangible services and things that we actually are doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things is that is pretty notable is like our ERA program. Um, and it's uh, accelerated recovery. Right. And so mm -hmm. um, essentially what we've done is we've expedited the access and the care that an athlete would receive would nor would not normally receive we've expedited that care so from the time of injury if it's something that requires surgery or rehab or both mm -hmm. we've expedited that level of care for them um so that they could get back into the game right because that's our goal right that's the, it's so the value hasn't changed but what we saw was a huge gap a huge discrepancy in the values that we have and a value that we think is is um it's kind of like an in, it should be an innate thing for people. Standard um, of care, maybe. Uh, any, yeah, standard of care, exactly mm -hmm. right. Uh, Detriments, uh, uh, determinants of health, right? Like all of these types of things. Those these gap th those values translate into uh, determinants of health and standards of care, where we see far greater gaps in these particular populations. And so, uh, because we value those things on our own because it's bigger than just how well can we do a clinical evaluation and it's bigger than what kind of grades we made in anatomy and physiology and it's bigger than whatever else right it's bigger than us building our resume because we actually care about what people are going to say when we're dead and gone mm -hmm. um we then say oh here's an area where our values can serve this gap we're minding the gap, not only in our own lives, but then that helps us to mind the gap in the society that we see at large or in the culture that we find around us. And so um, just it, it, we haven't we didn't have to look very far. Right. When you talk about wanting to build culture, I want to kind of tie that back into that last question. It's like we start with what is like what's around us. Right. I, I might have this grand vision to, to do all kinds of things, but I, there are certain things that I just can't change just so it fits my vision or what I think should be happening, right? So I have limitations as a human. So it's like, okay, what are my vision and values? And then how does that fit into the larger picture of things that that are far greater than I am, right? And so that was this, this, uh, this idea of the ERA program was a good example of how we did that. We said, man, look, here are the values that we have. How do we go in and overcome 
some of the gaps that we see here, right? And so the parable that we often use is you teach a man to fish, he eats, or you teach a person to fish, they eat for a day. Mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, you give a person a fish, they eat for a day. You teach a person to fish, they eat for a lifetime, right? That's a great, that's a profound thing. But then we go on to say, here's the, here's the gap that we mind. We teach people how to fish all day. There's a lot of people who are underserved, who know how to fish better than some of the most expert mm -hmm. fishermen but they don't have the access or they don't have fishing poles. They can't afford them. Um, they can't afford to get to the places where the fish are, mm -hmm. right? So there's barriers to those things, right? So what we've done and what we try to do is, first of all, thinking along those lines and saying, hey, it's not just about teaching people things. It's not just about giving people things, but it's also about, I love this term that Adam uses. He calls himself an accomplice sometimes. And it's like, we, we are accomplices to these folks. Like we don't care what people might think we're going to ride or die with you in this regard, because these are things that you deserve. So yeah, we're going to leverage our network. We're going to leverage our relationships. We're going to leverage our resources here. Use our fishing pole here, hop in our car or hop in the Uber that we're going to fund through at last. So you can get to the physical therapy appointment and leverage that relationship with the physical therapist that we have so that they don't it's a pro bono service to that person. Right. And that's essentially, I just kind of gave you a sneak peek of what the ERA program is. And then when they get to return to play, they're getting all this high level testing. That's for another day, right? We can talk about that at another time. You can find that about more about the ERA program, but that's it. That's a practical example of how we address some of those things practically. Mm -hmm. um, we could probably talk long, long, long about, you know, beneath the surface as well but ultimately it starts with you internally you you gotta care enough and want to actually address these things um before doing anything else because otherwise it just becomes performative absolutely and I, and I appreciate you giving the concrete example of the era program um because i think it's a, a powerful uh, initiative amongst everything else that, that the two of you are doing through at last and Ray Cross. And before we get into the last question, just real quick for everyone listening again, all the content, um, the, the bios and the, um, the, the contact information is in the show notes. There's a link tree with all their stuff, but definitely on, on link on LinkedIn, look up a T L A S T. So at last, um, on Instagram at last pod, A T L A S T P O D. Um, uh, and the rain cross, uh, High performance website just raincrosshp.com. So definitely check those out. But before we go, um, I want to give a call to action and I want to specifically focus in on that teach to fish, teach them how to fish concept. And when we're talking about to other leaders out there, other organization leaders, business leaders, what mentoring, what education, what leadership development initiatives do you two feel that they should really be investing in to engage and support? an inclusive and professional growth of their team members so that whatever service they're providing, they can be seeking out those underprivileged, underrepresented groups around them and have a, um, you know, a, a social transformation, a social impact of their own with their organization. So um, Adam, let me start with you. Um, what you, maybe you were like one or two certain areas you think they really need to be focusing on with their education and their initiatives. I am going to go, with an answer that is going to be not very typical, but it's recency bias for me right now. And I've lectured on this topic, so I think I can speak to this well. I think leaders of all organizations should be very purposeful in the health and wellness of people that they lead. And I think I'll give you some concrete examples, but I was preparing a lecture this morning actually looking at epidemiology of appropriate sleep and one third of United of Americans do not sleep more than seven hours a night. Somewhat close to 44% of collegiate student athletes don't sleep appropriately. And then data that I've collected over 800 athletic trainers and physical th therapists with a validated measure says that above 70% of those healthcare providers don't sleep appropriately. Mm -hmm. There's great evidence to show that you don't have the same level of, of emotional tel intelligence in interaction with people that you're interacting with on a daily basis mm -hmm. if you've not slept appropriately. 
and some very st salient studies to prove that or, or at least support that strongly. And so you see companies like Aetna, the big insurance company, is now paying their employees to, they're giving their employees sleep wearables and tracking their sleep. And if they sleep over eight hours a night, they make extra money. So the strength of this science, I think, is demonstrated by an insurance company whose mm -hmm. business is to not give away money yeah. and to not, and not pay claims usually is paying their employees to sleep appropriately because not only emotional intelligence, but cognition, memory, like so many things are impacted. And so I think it's not that difficult of a solution to improve people, of a solution to improve people's sleep. But leaders just need to have buy-in that supporting employee wellness and health impacts their bottom line. And that's the truth, I think, yeah. at least from, from the evidence that I've read. Absolutely. And your key takeaway is that help your people take better care of themselves so they can refill their cup to give to others and pour out more on, into to what your mission is. So couldn't agree more with that. C Bates, what about you? Yeah, I, I echo I echo Adam's sentiments of before you start wanting to affect change on anybody else, you need to start affecting change with yourself. Start with the, you know, start with the person in the mirror. Um beyond the vanity side right i i i like to look in the mirror you know but it's like that's because your go, beard looks good yeah thank you <laughs> thank you I, hey you got a pretty strong one there too man this is great um, it's wisdom <laughs> it's great but but i think there's something to um not enough of us not enough of us really go deep with ourselves we're quick to go deep with other people or want to go deep with other people. But you'll find that once you get there, you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble because you're people will know that you don't do the work yourself. Right. So you try to go deep with others. So I, I just think Adam just gave a very practical, tangible example. Go to sleep, get some rest. Right. But in a more general way, I, I you know, go go see a therapist Go get some another set of eyes and ears to to look at your life, you know, so that you can have a proper perspective of who you are and what you've been through and why you are the way that you are and why you think the way that you think and why, you know, it, it, to get a, a better picture of that, because the better you understand yourself, then then you can you can see all the other things you can see more clearly you yeah you know the, the 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 airplane analogy you have more oxygen you take put your oxygen mask on first before you go and try to help others i, I you know i'll just say it man we're in a helps profession and like many other helps professions um we've got too many unnecessary martyrs who are um we, you know we wrestle with the savior complex we just want to we're so eager to go and save everybody and bring everybody back and we're just neglecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're not going to save very many people or for very long if you're not taking, if you're not around, you know? Mm. So, so yeah. So take care of yourself, right? Take care of yourself, but not in like this selfish way, but so that you can be more selfless. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. I appreciate that fellas. Powerful, powerful stuff. Um, I truly for one appreciate your mission and what you're looking to do, making an impact through at last and through rain cross. Um, and just, you know, the, the stuff you're putting out on your, uh, your social media, your, your podcast. So thank you so much for investing the time and the energy into, yeah, to making great. that happen. And, yeah, no um, problem. you know, again, all, all your information is, is in the show notes, uh, for everyone listening, but I, I really, really appreciate your time. This was a great conversation. Make sure you follow them on social media. Make sure you connect with them on LinkedIn. And uh, gentlemen, just keep keep that uh, keep that up. Be a catalyst. You're doing it well. Yeah. And, uh, thank yeah. you for what you're doing. Right. Appreciate on. it. Thank, thank you. you so much, Ryan. Thank you for the time, and it was an excellent discussion. Absolutely. We will talk again very soon. Hope right, you have a great good. night. You too.